So it's a new week, and we're going to go ahead and start talking about the missing people in Iowa. Now, I've had to do a lot of research on this, and I've had to do a lot of math. So I'm going to spare you a lot of my math details, because the math is important to the story. So if you're not familiar with it, what happened was last month, in the month of July, a young woman went missing. A young 20-year-old woman was out jogging, and she went missing. The name was Molly Tibbetts. And people were like, oh no, this young, attractive white woman went missing, which tends to happen. It gets nationwide exposure. And then when people in Iowa kind of started looking at the numbers, because everyone's trying to figure out this mystery, they discovered that in the past 10 days, 48 people have gone missing in the state of Iowa, almost all of them under the age of 18. So that started a panic in Iowa. And that spread across the rest of the nation where, like, how could 48 people go missing in Iowa in 10 days? That's amazing. And when I first heard that, I was like, that is amazing. Now, I've heard theories that it's reptilians gathering food. I've actually heard theories that it's the Japanese alien hybrids because apparently Japanese are like half alien, according to some people. The Japanese alien hybrids are declaring war on the United States. I've heard Pizzagate which is the Democratic-controlled cannibal child pedophilia ring. I've heard all of those. I've heard, you know, just basic stuff like serial killer, saint worshippers, and all of that. Now, I don't think it was reptilians, obviously. I think that, you know, one or two may have been this, or one or two may have been that, and so on and so forth. But the main thing to look at was, are they correct? Is did 48 people really go missing the last 10 days? And according to all of the reports, that is that is true. The second question we have to answer, the second question we have to look at is, is this abnormal? Now, when, when generally people, when we think of places we don't live, we break them down to the most base, basic stereotype. So when I think of New York, I think of a bunch of like surly Italians and like Irish people, the dead rabbits, walking around billy clubs and beating people up. When I think of Russia, I think of it being really cold and people dancing. When I think of Iowa, I think of cornfields as far as the eye can see. I have a friend out there, actually. Hey, Carrie. Cornfields as far as the eye can see. And, like, little towns dotting here and there. Carrie actually used to work at a movie theater in town. The movie theater, I should say. They only had one screen, which was super bizarre to me. But very low population. So, is 48 people missing within 10 days an abnormal abnormality for Iowa. And sadly, it's not. There's two sides of the story, so that's not the end of the story. But when we look at Iowa, they have a population of 3 million people. So that's not a lot for such a big state, but that's also not a very small state. So when we look at Iowa, they had, in 2017, they had 4,300, roughly 4,300 juveniles reported missing in 2017. They have a population of 3 million, and that averaged out to about 12 a day. So if 48 people went missing over the course of 10 days, technically that's a little bit below average if normally it's 12 a day. Now we have to compare it against something. I went to um, USA Today, talked about South Dakota having an issue. Their missing people lists 1,400 missing children in the year 2015. So that's the latest year they had statistics for. So we have Iowa with 4,300 and South Dakota nearby with 1,400. And I'm like, whoa, that's a big discrepancy. But again, Iowa uh, has 3 million people and South Dakota only has 8,600,000 people. So those numbers are fairly comparable. You can scale them up or scale them down. So it's what's ha- it seems to be in that region that that is a fairly standard number. Number one's not sticking out higher than the other. So the missing people in Iowa, it is it is unfortunately the, the normal numbers. However, what I find most interesting about this story is that when you have people saying these numbers are out of control that Iowa has a missing people problem, and they list the people who went missing in that 10-day period, they'll list two people who went missing in the same city on the same day. Then you go down this person, that person, and you'll find another two people missing from the same city on the same day. You'll go down a couple more names and so on and so forth. When the mainstream media reports on this story, 
they take those exact same names and those exact same cities and they scramble them. So this is from the Channel 3 News in Iowa, in Clear Lake, Iowa. This is their list. I'll just read a few of them. McKenna Driver, Davenport, age 15, July 26th. Eric Magnuson, Potawatomi County, age 14, July 26th. Anna Marsuk, Des Moines, age 17, July 26th. DeShaney Phillips, Davenport, age 16, July 26th. So so why are why is DeShaney and McKenna divided up? There's no it's not in alphabetical order. It's not based on age. But now I'm kind of in the middle of the list. They do this throughout the list. We have another kid missing from Davenport, a Davenport, a Serenity, a Serenity Wyman, age 13, July 25th, so the previous day. We had a kid missing from Council Bluffs on the 25th, and then we have to go eight names down to find another kid missing from Council Bluffs on the 24th. So if I'm just reading this list, I'm not seeing a pattern. I go, oh, you know, that makes sense. You know, these kids are missing. When we look at lists of people who are saying there is a problem, they have them. City, city, day, city, 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 day, city, day, city, day. So they're showing you the pattern that these kids are missing from the same city either the same day or one day apart, which makes it look more like there's a predation going on. So I have to ask the question, why are they scrambling the names in the mainstream media? I hate using the term mainstream media. I mean, it started off as a signifier, just like there's mainstream record companies. There's a difference between a mainstream record company and a lower level record company or one of the big five book publishers and the other little book publishers. That's what mainstream media eventually, originally was. You have the mainstream media and then you had radio, which was kind of the difference between the two. And then you had the internet and all of that stuff. So I hate really using the word mainstream media because it's such a derogatory. But my point is, is that in the, in the media, I can only use the word mainstream media. In the mainstream media, they're taking the same names and they're scrambling, scrambling them up to make them look like it's not such an issue. The reason why I have a problem with that is that we all know that if they want to sell us there is a problem, they can arrange the facts in a way to say that this is a problem. And in the same way, they can arrange the facts to make us think this isn't a problem. The media could have easily said, look, these kids went missing from these same cities on the same day. Iowa has a missing people problem. What is going on? Instead, the headlines they're running is, this isn't a problem. This is normal. This is statistical. And they're right. It is statistical. But I'm questioning their motives. That I believe it's statistical, and they believe it's statistical. But then they take those statistics and they rearrange them, or take those names and they rearrange them to make it look less menacing. When if there was a flip side, if they wanted to oust the police chief of that area, if they didn't like the, the way he performed, if they wanted to enact some sort of change in that area, they would take those same facts and figures and present them to me saying, this is a problem, look. Instead, they're saying, scramble, 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 this isn't a problem, look. Not every conspiracy has to have a shape-shifting reptilian or Hillary Clinton eating a baby. Those are Those are the conspiracies that end up making us overlook the real conspiracies. You can think Satan worshippers are ruling the planet, and that keeps you from looking at the corporations that are ruling the planet. The fantastical will always overshadow the realistic, and the realistic conspiracies are the ones we have to worry about. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our next story here. And and let me say this too. I hope everyone on that list is found. I think missing, you know, I have a lot of friends who are homeless I've known a lot of young people who are homeless. They're homeless for multiple reasons. It sucks. Uh, Run away. You know, having to run away, all that stuff. I hope all of those kids are found, and I hope everyone gets what they need. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.